Hello, my name is Marteinn and this is 3D Printing Iceland. In this video I'm going to show you how I create the 3D landscape models I've been printing out and painting. I've got uh, several questions online on how the process is from my mapping software to a printable file on my printer. So I want to do a separate video on, on that instead of explaining uh, in text on on Twitter. So I'm gonna show you uh, a capture of, of the process on my workstation and uh, then I have a short time lapse of this model. This is a, a area called Thorsmörk. It's a, a very beautiful area, uh, very uh, popular uh, to go there and, and hike and, and, and travel. Uh, so this video is not going to be a paint video like the others, but just uh, uh, the process of how I create the model and, and print them out. So let's jump into the uh, capture of the from my workstation. Yeah, to show you how I go about creating the the terrain data file for 3D printing landscape. Uh, I begin on my map website uh, to find a location. This is a web website I run uh, and this is a map of Iceland I created. So in this case I'm, I was thinking about uh, creating a map of area here is called Thorsmörk. So I usually uh, have a look at the map and, and find a uh, a location to to make a, a print out of. So in this case I'm gonna take a small section of this area here. Um, so I've uh, loaded that data in my mapping program. I have a program called Global Mapper. That's a program I use to uh, create the maps and in that program I have a lot of data and this is a, a background coloring uh, file for for the map that I have on the website so here I have uh, a lot more detail just of the ter terrain so uh, I've decided on creating uh, a tile of, of this area approximately so I've loaded up uh, a digital elevation f file and this is uh, height information and I can show you like a 3D view of the area so this is uh, the Eyjafjallajökull glacier and volcano and we have another volcano over here that erupted just before the Eyjafjallajökull volcano erupted uh, so here I can look around the area and see if the terrain is interesting to be printed and in this area I have a lot of mountain ridges and I have the glaciers on, on this side and on this side so I think this will be an interesting print so <coughs> I usually go about having a look at the terrain to see if it's interesting for printing I can uh, show you, I can see different types of, of coloring or shades in the in the program, but usually I have a look at it like this. Um, but let's say that this is the area I'm going to select. So what I do now is, is simply export a portion of the, of the, of the file. The, the whole file is uh, approximately three gigabytes in size and uh, and it's just a small portion of Iceland but now I'm gonna export as a STL file and here I have an option to save the resolution and also to create a binary STL file and uh, so here I can uh, select the export bounds and can draw a box uh, like so. This is the area I want to print out. So
so I have that. Um, sometimes if I if I have a big area, I can't use uh, five meter resolution. Uh, sometimes I have to use maybe ten meter resolution. Or, but if I have a small area, I have also another model that is in two meter resolution. But for this area, five meter resolution is is fine. So now I can uh, export this as a STL file and open it up in in Slicer. So I already saved this. But, uh, if I go back to Slicer, uh, I'm gonna delete this and add, add the model again. And this model is is 847. Gigabit megabytes of size. Uh, some of the models I've been printing are approximately two gigabytes, and two gigabytes is is pretty much the the maximum file size the Prusa Slicer Edition can open. So I have to limit myself to two gigabytes, but that's a very high detail, so it doesn't doesn't matter. <coughs> it takes. A while to open this big STL file, but uh, usually it's uh, it's okay. Uh, when the file opens, it uh, is much larger than the print bed, so it asked me there if I wanted to scale it down to fit the print bed, and like in this instance, it's completely flush to the maximum uh, width of the of the bed, uh, but. Uh, what I do next is is to scale it to a size I'm gonna use, and in this case I'm gonna just scale it a little bit down, uh, so it isn't uh, touching the sides. Uh, what I do next is is to rotate the model. And I'm gonna rotate it. 90 degrees, so this side here will be the bottom side. So it's like this. Uh, normally when I print it, I have a GoPro camera mounted on the bed in this location. So I need to rotate the, the model uh, 45 degrees. So the, the camera is facing the model correctly, uh, but I have to rotate it uh, around the C axis, minus 45. No, that was incorrect. <laughs> I have to rotate it plus 45. like so, uh, and I usually move the model a little bit uh, from the sides, uh, but this is okay. So uh, now I'm ready to slice it. I usually am printing at 0 0.2 millimeter uh, layer height, and I've been printing the models on the rigid ink PLA, and I'm quite happy with that. So when this is done, I can just slice the file that also takes takes a while. So now the, the f f model is sliced. It took uh, one and a half minutes approximately. So I can view the layers. Uh, there are uh, sometimes uh, quite good overhangs uh, with the mountains, but uh, I haven't got in real trouble. Uh, I usually have a look and see if 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 one side is better than the other. Uh, if I have a steep overhang, I might rotate it so this will be the bottom side. Uh, but usually, I try to have the thick side on the bottom and the thinner side on the top. Uh, if I have a thin side at the bottom, I add uh, uh, maybe one centimeter th thick brim. Uh, to the print, but in this case the bottom is quite thick, so I don't believe I will need a brim on this. So this will 
be okay i think uh, there are maybe here uh difficult uh overhang but i think it will be okay uh, usually it's uh, okay so far printing uh, with some overhangs on my prusa um, i haven't had to uh, rotate a print after i have started printing because i spent some time usually to find out if i if i get into the problem but uh, so now there is nothing left to ex and to export the decode that takes takes a while also uh, uh, here I could see the G code is is 20 no, 45 megabytes in size uh, the biggest model uh, I printed was 158 megabytes in, in size so that was quite a bit larger than this one uh, here you can see the the used filament uh, protected use so uh, this is not too bad and this is the cost in Icelandic kronas so it's not very expensive to print out one model this is uh, okay so that's the process of, of creating the models and uh, I hope you learned something new it's a uh, quite a task for my workstation I have a very powerful computer doing this process uh, I have tried to open the, the 3d uh, digital elevation map files in my laptop and uh, that laptop has, has 8 gig of RAM and, and uh, a 4 core CPU and it doesn't handle it by any means uh, this workstation has 64 gigs of RAM and and is heavily overclocked and water cooled uh, and I still have to wait a few minutes to load the data but so uh, let's get to the printing of the of the models and continue with the video Yeah, so uh, this was the video on, on how I create the models and the short time lapse of, of this print. Uh, I hope uh, you got some idea on how, how I go about creating those models and it will maybe give you some idea how you can make your own. Um, uh, for the US you can get uh, very detailed data sets uh, through Global Mapper software I'm using and there's also online sources um, from the mapping agency in, in the US where you can get uh, the models if, if you want to use other software but this is how I go about creating those models and I hope you enjoyed the process and, and uh, this video so I will see you in the next one